Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at OpenHab. And what is OpenHab, you ask? OpenHab is a smart home portal for integration, integration of your smart devices like your light bulbs, door locks, cameras, all that good stuff. With its pluggable architecture, OpenHab supports more than 200 different technologies and systems and thousands of devices. Automate with ease. Use a powerful and flexible engine to design rules with time and event based triggers, scripts, actions, notifications, and voice control. Runs everywhere. Run your server on Linux, Mac OS, Windows, Raspberry Pi, Docker, Synology. Access, access it with apps for the web, iOS, Android, and others. No cloud required. OpenAd runs on your hardware doesn't require any cloud service to work, keeps your data privately at home, and talks directly to your local devices whenever possible. At the core of our philosophy is that you always remain in control. But wait, it also will integrate with cloud, to cloud services as well. Integrations are available for the most popular cloud-based smart home platforms, including Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, Apple HomeKit. Use the OpenHab Cloud Connector with the free myopenhab.org service or your host or host your own. Now I'm going to show you three ways you can do this. Well, basically two. Uh, headless, which is what I have here. I have a Ubuntu server. Um, through the desktop environment, through the terminal, and through the app store uh, for Ubuntu uh, on KDE's Discover. So basically all you got to do is type in sudo snap, not app, install open app, and it's that simple. Now there's another way you can do it. You can do it through doctor, doc, doctor, docor, docor. Doctor, doc, or potato, potato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> Alrighty, anyways, type in sudo snap install open hab. Put in your password. And this will take a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, and she's done. Now, I've already took the liberty and set this up on my home server. This instance is in a VM, so we're going to go ahead and connect to my server and I'll show you I'll show you what it looks like. What I've, what I've set up so far. I haven't done a lot to it yet, but I plan on expanding it out later. And to get to that... Oops, I mistyped something already. And to get to that instance, <clears throat> excuse me, you would type in HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.0.105 port 8080. Now that's the address on my network. It's standard, generic, and actually kind of security risk. But I have so many devices on my network that it is a huge headache to switch everything over and figure out where everything went. And one of these days I plan on doing it soon. Anywho. And this is what I've got so far. Got my Google Home clock and this one didn't pan out for some reason. It didn't connect properly. Um, it will connect to Jellyfin. Um, Spotify, Plex server, uh, Zonebinder, um, there's hundreds of add-ons for this. So many devices and so many different services, it's, it just blew my mind away. And I couldn't believe how easy it was to get up and running for basic home usage, you know, turning on your lights, connecting to Google. Uh, 
you got Google Nest or Google Hub or whatever they call it connecting to those so basically what I can do is here is well I got books where's my books my books my books I can do latest movies latest music latest TV shows Collections, live TV, movies, music, live TV recording, TV shows. It's supposed to be showing my books. Oh, was the first one. Okay. Let's go with. That quick and that easy. Now let's go back and I will mute the audio. But as you can see, there's all the movies. I'm going to pick a good one here. Just bear with me. Oh, I... Boop. Okay. Hopefully I don't get a copyright for that, but <laughs> I think it was under I think it was under the uh the limit there. By law you're allowed fifteen seconds of commentary on on videos and movies, so I think it was like at ten or something. Anywho, alright. Now Let's get into how to install it on the desktop. Okay, here's an instance of Lubuntu on the LXQT desktop. So we're going to open up a terminal here. Oops. Uh, open. Ah. There we go. Okay, so you have a desktop environment. If you don't want to do it headless, just type in sudo snap install open. Tab. Now this instance already has it installed, so I expect it to spit out an error for me. Man, I'm so thumbs today. Snap open how to is already installed. So, I'm going to go ahead and uninstall it, and then install it through Discover. So, I'm going to go set that up, and we'll be right back. Okay, just type in Discover. Click on that. It'll open up for you. Type in OpenHab. And click on install mine it's already installed on mine so I'm not going to go ahead and remove it and reinstall it and then we'll move along move on to the next section okay next what you want to do is type in Firefox open up the web browser Put in HTTP colon forward slash twice 
Uh, you can do your IP address or local host. Local host is easy to remember for me, so port 8080 forward slash. All right. Put in your name, password. You want to put in another password. For some reason, it remembers that. Okay. Regional's good. Configure this later. Uh, we'll do this later. Alright. And this is what you're greeted with. Now you can go to your documentations, which will bring you to open hab to org docs. And it'll let you know exactly what you need to do. But <clears throat> first thing I do is click on settings and go down to bindings. Bindings are the add ons. And you got a bunch of them here Amazon Echo Control, Android Bridge Binding Control. And you can search through these two. Type in Spotify. You can install Spotify for the binding. Click here for more details. I'll let you know on that. Click on install. If you want more in depth, just click on the icon itself. This binding implements a bridge to the Spotify player web API and makes it possible to discover Spotify Connect devices available on your Spotify premium account. Now, I don't know if you can do that on the free account or not, but... It does work. Now, if you got like a Jellyfin server... This. this is the binding for Jellyfin, the volunteer built media solution that puts you in control of your media. Stream to any device from your own server with no strings attached, your media, your server, your way. This binding allows allows connect. This binding allows connect. Connecting to Jellyfin clients that support remote control. It's build that should be a T on top of the man. Grammar police. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, built the top of the Jellyfin Kotlin SDK. Install that. Install. Now, if you go back to. Now you can go to regional settings, show advanced, you can put uh, your specific location in. Uh, I'm in the United States. Yeah, we'll say I'm in Sacramento. Close enough. <laughs> Click on done. And then there you go. Go up here. Click save. That saves it. Got voice right here. Default text to speech. Default speech to text. And there's a bunch of uh, add-ons and bindings for that. Now if you want to put in that, go back down to bindings. Click on search. Uh, type in voice. Voice RS to RSS. Click on that. Install. Speech. Come on, 
S P E A C H Steve. App speaker. I did not realize that's there. You can install that. There we go. Google Cloud speech to text. You can click on that one. Click on install. Uh, Poly speech to text. Mary speech to text. Google Cloud text to speech. Install. Bosch Bixer binding. Open have three. Install. Okay, and things. This is where, if it's on your network, everything that it recognizes right off the bat will show up under things. I'm in a VM and I don't have it set up, so that it have the network set up properly. <clears throat> now you can go to pages and set up your pages, page overview, add masonry. Digital clock card gives you the clock. Do the setting on there. Configure the widget. So advanced. Outline. Go on. Here's the clock format and everything else on there. Show the date. Alrighty. And that is OpenHab. Open source home automation similar to Home Assistant. I'm out. Have a good one.